Check. Okay. Uh, now just the balance. Okay, I'm trying to stretch time uh, for Alain Badiou to return, but I'm not sure if we should uh, depend on that. I was going to uh, explain to him why I decided to do this conference in English initially. The idea had, uh, had come across my mind to give it in French. But uh, in any case, let me uh, set out my aim in this paper, uh, the title of which is Beyond Recognition, the Mathematics of Bodily Generation. I should emphasize new bodily generation since Logique des Mondes Book 7 deals specifically with the categorical mapping of a body of truth that is adequate to the concept of a faithful that is generic subject. I begin the first section of my paper on general issues regarding the relationship between philosophy and mathematics in Badiou's thought, both as totalized discourses as well as string of problem-solving creations. And to this section, in honor of Badiou's Eloge series, translated in English as In Praise Of, I lend the subtitle Eloge du Système, In Praise of the System. By this title, I also refer to an essay, Système du Système, published in Les Temps Modernes, 2015, uh, number one, that I had the pleasure of publishing in a Portuguese translation for a dossier on recent expressions in ontology and system in French philosophy in Veritas 2013 number two, the philosophical periodical published by PUC RS University, known in English as the Catholic University of Rio Grande do Sul State in Porto Alegre, Brazil, where I teach and do research. So in that essay, Badiou asserts, I quote him, that the litigious sense of systematicity is disconnected from the idea of totality or the encyclopedia, or even of complete knowledge. It is simply a linear organization of coherence." End of quote. I highlight this aspect and stress that mathematics provides a principle of coherence without which the theory of the new or second body as developed in Logique des Mondes, Book 7, would mainly rely on ambiguously structured models of the organic or the psychoorganic which I review in the second section of my paper. In that section, I also turn to Badiou's contrast between the formal concepts of indiscernibility and compatibility as applied to the generic subject in its bodily form. As such, uh, I shall argue that l'être l'événement, henceforth uh, referred to as EE, uh, and logique des mondes, henceforth referred to as LM, uh, cannot be framed according to our traditional understanding of ontology and phenomenology. The claim that ontology is mathematics cannot be distinguished from the generic framework. Uh, in turn, the considerable asemantic expandability of category theory would seem to have as a consequence a retroactive directedness on the set theoretic model that bolsters the initial ZFC framework in which EE was crafted. Given that the objective of that work is the construction of the generic set, the retro action has to do with the event and the question of negation. Now, speaking of the generic subject, I think it's important to recall its properties, and these are recapil uh, recapitulated in EE Meditation 55. Uh, a subject is not a substance, a subject is not a void point either, a subject is not in any manner the organization of a sense of experience. A subject is not an invariable of presentation. It is rare. And I want to, I really want to work around this, this notion of rarity, especially regarding the, the last conference that, that was given. Uh, every subject is qualified, although it is not characterized as consciousness, identity, or the result of legal prescription and a subject is not a result any more than it is an origin. It is the local status of a procedure, a configuration in excess of this situation arising from an event, uh, événement. So we can see that Badiou's conception of the generic subject uh, is not only without an object, but without a body. As such, it is fundamental to recall that the generic subject is ultimately the ontological, that is, mathematical field, not with the generic set added on, but as thought from the retroaction of the generic set on to the state of the situation 
which is relative and always relative to a situation. So let me develop my first section, which is the éloge du système, in praise of the system. Whatever the relation or non-relation of l'être l'événement and logique des mondes might or might not be, and I must add, I'm not one of the privileged few like uh, Yana, uh, who has read L'Immanence des Vérités. It has become sufficiently clear since the publication of uh, LM that the two works cannot be separated. Many of the objections raised against EE, Lettre d'Evénement, are easily rebutted by reference to the scope of Logique des Mondes. And judging by essays such as Hunter 2016, Torsic 2017, Maliki 2014, amongst others, the asystematic objections that characterize these critical perspectives focus mainly, if not merely, on Lettre l'événement. However, much of the enthusiasm surrounding Logique des Mondes, for example, from the good folks of speculative realism, is thankfully sobered up by Lettre l'événement. The point is that, the hastiest, that only the hastiest of readings can suggest that the tandem of these works compose a Badiou I and a Badiou II. Still, the structure of these works does determine the way the historical and empirical references and analyses of the truth procedures are listed, organized, and bridged. Certainly, they offer contrasting views on what mathematics can achieve from a philosophical perspective, as well as what math can do for philosophy. Therefore, it is valuable to go through the structure of these sequences. So from the 1988 to the roughly 2005 pre Le Siècle sequence, the verification of the formation of generic set takes from a series of references, such as Beckett's writing of the generic, Malarmé, the question of woman and the two of love, Cantorian and Dedekindian mathematics, the political sequences of the Soviet Revolution, and post-May 68. When they do find their way into Logique des Mondes, they do so mainly in the beginning of the book. A case in point, the scolium on the emergence of the dodecaphonic school at the end of Logique des Mondes, book one, is still very much set in the terms of the generation of a faithful subject in EE. I would also add that Le Siècle stems from lectures given in the 1990s and therefore remains solidly steeped in the perspective granted to the subject in the intrinsic workings of the set theoretic ontology within the conditions. Likewise, accelerationism, uh, Parisian Platon trees, the classicist dive into depicting the realism of ruins as well as the categorical bridging of conditions between love and the political, for example, or the political and the poem are quite specific to the Logique des Mondes context. Moreover, Badiou's interesting development on anti-philosophy all but disappears in the Logique des Mondes sequence. The set theoretical markers of inconsistent multiplicity, the void, the meta-ontological covering by the state of the situation of the situation are diminished to a minimum in the latter period, substituted as they are by non-composed multiplicity, commuting categorical compositions, the inexistent, then compatibility, topos theory, and strong singularity. Neither randomness, nor context, nor indeed body, function conceptually in the prior flat field of contingency eventual site and the condition relative formal subject. As we move from l'être et l'événement toward logique des mondes, realism is shifted to intuitionism as the semantics for a general philosophy as conceived imminently within the system and discontinuously from without. But the system proceeds and is resilient, I would say, to even the most consistent of critiques. Hence this éloge, which I intend as maximal, and as the aim of l'être l'événement is not a philosophical foundation of mathematics per se, which uh, regarding the issue of whether the set theoretic model in EE could be other than ZFC, I believe the answer must be the following. Perhaps so long as it is one that uh, warrants the emergence of a generic subject. So if the ZFC model weren't adequate enough or isn't adequate enough, I think one of the questions, one of the criteria to examine regarding another model would be that it warrant the emergence of a generic subject. So this is the overriding criterion, one that justifies the still open question in mathematics as to whether set theory or category theory has the greatest potential to found mathematics. Uh, Professor Badiou, je fais l'éloge du système uh, en, en reconnaissance de la série des éloges.
Still, as I have experienced the development of the system from the time of Badiou seminars in the pre-habilitation uh, period through the consequences and long reflection in the 1990s triggered by Jean Toussaint Desantis' Le Temps Moderne po paper, in addition to my experience of teaching the system at both the doctoral and undergraduate levels, I do see vulnerabilities in Lettres et l'Evénement from the way or the wish with which the book is often read. And I should like to add three considerations to this discussion. So first, the frequent association, if not identification, of the mathem condition, which becomes the scientific condition in the, in the Logique des Mondes period, with the ontology per se, that is, with mathematics. One of the ways I believe Alain points to keeping the two separate is by shifting to a thesis that is no longer logicist, but radically realist, if not a structuralist realism of sorts, on the discourse of the multiple for the ontology as stated in Lettres d'Evénement Introduction, section two, pages four to six of Oliver Feltham's translation. In it, Badiou establishes a clear break with the analytic tradition of philosophical logic, thus separating logic from deduction and hypotheses, and this takes place especially in Meditation 24, which is titled Deduction as Operator of Ontological Fidelity and subdivided into three sections, the formal concept of deduction, reasoning via hypothesis, argument on the ontology, and not the mathem, uh, sorry, uh, argu uh, reasoning via hypothesis, reasoning via the absurd, and the triple determination of ontological fidelity. So notice that the term logic doesn't appear here. What we see is deduction and the principles of deduction. What Badiou sets out is an argument on the ontology and not the mathem as scientific condition. There's no denying that the set theory was historically constructed as a theory, by which, of course, it qualifies as an eventual subject in the mathem. But to the dislike of many of Alain's critics, namely the fact that the ontology is depleted of its historical markers, or at least many of them, this is not merely a theoretical ploy to reinforce the centrality of mathematics to philosophy. The ontology is radically intrinsic, or in Badiou's own words, intra-situational, Lettre page 358, and fundamentally imminent to every truth condition as it is also discontinuous in time. Furthermore, any semantic perspective on the ontology is thus delimited by a condition, unless, of course, one breaks with semantics and receives the non-referential inscription of the multiple without one, which is the scope of set theory. Now, the former is the common or composable perspective regarding the truth, position, uh, the truth procedures. But instead of hypostatizing the eventual site as carrying the memory, as it were, of the generic subject, I would go as far as to say that the ontology should stimulate a radical innateness to the, general sub to the generic subject, provided, as one must, that the subject be without a recognizable body or indeed beyond recognition. That the system as a whole drives to perspectives that are beyond recognition stems from what we might cite as the trans-human body. As Badiou writes by evoking Lacan in Logique des Mondes, it is, I quote him, only as a trans-human body that a subject takes hold of the divisible body of the human animal. So in sum, it seems to me that the alleged double circularity in Lettre et regarding the subject and regarding an alleged suture to the mathem is removed once one rigorously differentiates, as one must, ontology from the mathem. Moreover, the latter ought to deal, the mathem or the scientific condition, ought to deal with revolutionary science. And there are many examples of such science, it seems to me, starting from Noam Chomsky's refined generative grammar, beginning with the PISA conferences and published in the lectures on government unbinding in 1981. The point of how generic subjectivity proceeds by effective and not cognitive, much less conscious recognition, is further underscored by Badiou's demonstration of the generic via the Cohen theorem of the forcing of a generic set to prove the independence of Cantor's continuum hypothesis from the ZF axioms. Now, this uh, proof applies to all of the conditions compossib uh, compossibly, uh, in their compossibility. 
uh, four conditions, namely, and the ontology provides a model that is uh, drawn or uh, initially intrinsic to these conditions, drawn out as a common feature of the procedure of uh, a construction of a generic set or a truth procedure. Now, the second tension or vulnerability I spot in critical receptions to Lettre l'événement is akin to what we might call the pseudo-utopian critique, namely questions of the sort on how generic subjectivity can be perpetuated historically. This is a question that often arises in, with respect to the political condition. Now, whenever stated as such, it seems to me that the question is severely flawed with respect to the demonstra demonstrations in Lettre l'événement. The generic subject or faithful truth procedure is a recursive as well as discontinuous process in historic time that is in existence or nature. It proves why discontinuity is not a choice but one of the parameters of the field of inquiry, inquiry when dealing with the recurrence of structured generic and generational form in historical time. And the general conception is maintained in Logique des Mondes regarding the constraints in which the new body of truth emerges. Finally, given that the ontology deals with multiplicity that is not a unity and with structure without an absolute form, but within the parameters determined by each given condition, the third vulnerability I see is found in lamentations stemming from Badiou's decision not to suggest what makes generic subjectivity operate. That is, not to point to a dynamic generative computational core. Now, this criticism also seems to miss the point as Lettre l'événement does not claim to explain how genericity, genericity proceeds in future time, but that it proceeds, thus emphasizing the demonstrable fact that radical change not only occurs in the historically mapped conditions, but that this type of change only arises insofar as a subject form carries it. And hence, uh, the fourth item that a subject is not an invariable presentation is rare. So in other words, genericity requires the historical field of the truth procedure to be analyzed locally, and indeed, I do stress this point, intrinsically. The ontology verifies whether it occurs according to parameters of generality, hence the identity with mathematics. The phenomenology, on the other hand, algebraically maps the paths to the contexts in which the generic is conserved, and their isomorphic doubles show how the subject form can be led astray from fidelity. The two perspectives are not the same, nor do they necessarily overlap, despite how the category of topos respects the parameters of the multiple as inscribed by set theory. Now, when they are indeed bridged, and one can claim that the function of the faithful subject in Logique des Mondes is to prove that they at times are, it furthers the point that ontology without phenomenology composes an incomplete system instead of a sim system of creative incompleteness. And this is why one is embedded in the other. Whether the orientation is set theoretic or category theoretical depends on what one chooses to discuss, being or appearance, that is, disobjectified situation and subject, or desubjectivized world, object and body. To sum up this éloge du système then, I would like to reiterate that the strength of Lettre l'événement is not to have made a general claim on the relationship between mathematics and philosophy, let alone on the mathematical foundations of philosophy. By contrast, it is an argument on the persistence of a writing code in nature, that is, in being, which has no empirical reference per se, since its motif is the multiple without one. This inscription has been developed historically as what mathematicians themselves call pure, mathematic, pure mathematics, in Aristotle denominated as the most general of sciences, ontology. As such, the axiom of extensionality and the existential qual quantifier are not operators on existence per se, but a condition of set building. Were the ontology extracted transcendentally from the conditions, it would require a semantic characterization of intentionality with an S. But that would give the theory itself the status of an existential object, which would then interfere with the compossible model regarding truth procedures where and when they occur, no matter their rarity. 
Now, Badiou's claim is that the truth procedure is minimally the writing of a non-discursive practice radically intrinsic to a situation, uh, to a condition. Therefore, there is no transcendent semantic characterization that would be separate from set theory and its technical scope is shown especially and solely by its set building capacity instead of the theorems which can be derived from it. Now, the set building capacity is shaped by a combination of the axioms, extensionality, separation, foundation, subset, void, substitution, infinity, an axiom of choice and forcing. It is important which are not axioms per se, you know, independent at least from the ZF, ZF model. It is important to stress one last point. The axiom of foundation or regularity, also known as regularity, coincidentally shows how an event is debarred from the ontology. I think this is a very powerful point. Uh, it's debarred from the rational writing of being qua being. In the simplest notation, the axiom of foundation states that for every non-empty set X, there is some Y that is a member of X such that the intersection of Y and X is the empty set. Now, from this axiom, one reads the exclusion of a variable. We may only hypothetically call it a set or element that fails to respect the ordered sequence of membership between element and set, namely the event. And as a result, the event is the name of the operator of such contingency, or as Badiou stresses in philosophy in the event, page 125, the event is, I quote him, nothing other than the possibility of randomness in the structure of the world. Now this randomness is not accounted for by the ontology in terms of what motivates it. Is this a problem for the system? Well, it might be insofar as the axiom of foundation or regularity is only a negative marginalization or uh, indication of the event. How do we get to randomness from negation? So it seems to me that an inflection on how ontology deals with the event can be gained perhaps by considering the so-called anti-foundation axiom. For if the axiom of foundation can be understood as excluding the event from the set theoretic universe, the attempt to make sense of it as anything different than a rupture leads to the type of circularity in infinity that Peter Axel's axiomatization of not well-founded sets or what he terms extraordinary sets attempts to map. These extraordinary sets are, according to him, I quote, indefinitely descending membership sequences, end quote. The result of this axiom would be to make the mapping of the event into an ordered linear sequence depend on circular reasoning at best, or a split conception of its real nature, something between circularity and negation, the consequence of which cannot fail to impact on the very idea of truth. The addition of this axiom could provide a positive or at least a balanced version of the event for the system. Its result is not to materialize the concept of event, but lend it further density. It seems to reinforce the idea that the ontological perspective, the relationship between philosophy and mathematics, occurs within the strict parameters of a generic set that is built not by a transcendent subject, but by elements that are abstract, formal, asemantic, and in key moments, circular entities, and not simply negative inconsistencies. If my reading is correct, then the anti-foundation axiom splits the real of the event in such a way that any truth mapped onto it must be dual, seen from a perspective that narrows down the emergence of the generic set to an intrinsic site in a condition. The spatial discontinuity of the locale as the algebraic structure, according to the Heiting algebra, set out by Badiou to ground the notion of context and topos in logique du monde, would thus be implied by l'être l'événement. And it is a perspective we need both historically in the mathem as well as abstractly in the ontology in order to prevent any desire of semantically repeating the terms of a classical pre-generic ontology that would simp simply relegate the event to either a, an accident or a cause. Now this preamble leads me to turn to the second and main section of my paper in which I reach what is the layout of the imminent experience of living the material embodiment of a conditioned truth 
a truth under condition in Logique des Mondes. Its parameter is still determined by a generic procedure, triggered by an event, but the focus is on context instead of content, which category provides Category theory provides through the concept of an inexistent, which is part of any object. For the theory of the new body in the Logique des Mondes lexicon, the term incorporation is used by Badiou to demonstrate how, for a body to emerge, a new body, an inexistent must be synthesized as a point. I thus emphasize the idea of generation so as to evoke also the material and dynamic homomorphism that in category theory already rids the term object of any content acquired from without the context of a categorical map. A point is a mediation between an event and an object in relation to which a truth may take shape. The category of topos is that from which Badiou draws the logical directedness of bodily generation. While it is a controlled and self-aware act for those affected, generation shows that the body of truth is at least partially willed by the human animals partake partaking in it. It is from what Badiou calls an efficient part of a body that an organ is recursively activated to trace a map among the points that make it commute as a category. The categorical mapping of the appearance of a body is succinctly set out in eight formulae whose set theoretic reference is important to note also despite the categorical context. As Badiou writes, A is the set that underlies the situation. E or epsilon, it's in, inexistent, all of them post-evental, and these are the, the eight formula. I would call attention particularly to the eighth one, which states that it can be inferred from a statement, X is an element of the body, and X differs from the trace epsilon, that the degree of existence of X is strictly lesser than the maximum n. I leave the formula on the, on the slide as I move to the heuristic supplement to the algebra because the incorporation and generation by an effective part of the body names that from which the initial stirrings of an inexistence come into the transcendental scale of appearance. And to check the incorporation of truth, the key formal term introduced in the scolium of Book 7 of Logique des Mondes is subjective induction. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this term is introduced separately from the category theoretic formal demonstration, Book 7, Section 3, which merely suggests that the infinitely expanding ahistorical category might not yet be at hand to make such a category commute. The example used in the scolium to map an imminent, uh, imminent description of the generation of a new political body is that of the sustainability of a revolutionary core in China under Mao's helmsmanship spanning the years 1924 to 1927. And the perseverance and permanence of this body is modeled according to the category theoretic operator of compatibility which comes to substitute the concept of forcing so central to the emergence of the subject as an indiscernible in l'être l'événement. So here we have the definition of compatibility and compatibles. Two elements of the support set of an object are compatible if the common of their existence is the same thing as the measure of their identity. Take any identity of the world written A and identity, and the two elements, A and B, of the support set of this object, that is of A, it is said that A and B are compatible when it is written A, sign of compatibility B, if this is the simplest form of the definition but not the most originary, the conjunction of their degrees of existence is equal to their degree of identity. I will list here simply the terms of the physics of the subject of truth without going into their detail for for lack of time and move on with, with my analysis here that in the category specific context, indiscernibility is stripped of its properties for the category theoretic notion of identity is always to an isomorphism. Now stemming from a perception made by Everest Galois regarding his newly discovered notion of algebraic groups, Badiou shifts indiscernibility to ambiguity before settling on compatibility. 
Quoting Galois in a letter to his friend Auguste de Chevalier on the 29th of March, 1830, uh, 29th of May, 1832, shortly before his death, the young mathematical prodigy declares the following, for some time, my main meditations have been aimed at the application of the theory of ambiguity to transcendent analysis, to which Badiou adds, this advocacy of the ambiguous, of the indiscernible, is the conspicuous sign of the birth of a new body whose internal organization will take up more than a century. In other words, ambiguity descriptively warrants a transcendental scale of existential identity as per the generation of structure from a point of inexistence in the mathematical theory of groups, which Badiou sketches within the mathem as extending to Grotendieck and the category of topos. Transposed as a supplement to the ontological perspective, it furthermore reinforces the aspect of commitment as derived from the study of simultaneous eventual generations or past ones. But why ambiguity? From a strategic point of view, the aim of the system is to maintain indiscernibility. After all, an eventual subject has nothing to gain from early exposure apart from vulnerability. Either in love, art, science, or the political, in the most ordinary terms, an eventual subject that is prematurely exposed to public appearance succumbs either to suicidal tragedy, in many cases of interracial, intergenerational or trans, transgender couples, financial speculation dramatized by overdose and illness when applied or experienced in the uh, art scene, be it the New York Street artists and writers such as Basquiat, Herring, or Kathy Acker, the institutional rejection of research funding with controversial theses on uh, the population of the American continent by, by Homo sapiens, or even uh, having to do with the nature of climate sciences and their necessary reception by political leaders, or the real post-slavery political subject of Brazilians hinted at in 2013. All of these cases, when appearing uh, rather prematurely, risk uh, being uh, absorbed by the state of the situation. So ambiguity adding to indiscernibility are factors that should bolster our understanding of the nature of the generic subject. So Badiou's decomposition, as it were, of the truth body is material to the point of being a waveform. Category theory certainly provides the potential for a series of innovative functors that seek to commute emergence within a major category. But the source of the functors is not unique. When they converge onto a topos, it seems as though the topos impels them to encounter further multiplicities, provided, of course, that there are no epistemological obstacles and suppression or acts of suppression as indicated above. So as Badiou holds, the body is composed of points, organs, and parts, some of which are efficient. An organ is defined categorically as an envelope or signature, but the concept of the efficient part of the body seems to stem from a set theoretic intrinsic determination if we read the definition on page 590. Given a body and a point, we call organ of a body for this point the envelope for the ontological order relation of the efficacious part of the body suited to the point provided that it differs from the eventual trace epsilon. If the organ exists, it is written E sub phi, epsilon sub phi. Now, the task of mapping the eventual body must secure it from any organic or biological reduction. Does organ provide the demonstration with this power? It seems as though genericity would be required here. For genericity is what ultimately warrants the prescriptive dimension of this ontology. In other words, my question is whether a categorical mapping commutes for a theory of body of truth that is generative and not merely one apt to descriptively account for the deviations of the generic in the other models of subjectivity, the reactive and obscure models of subjectivity. No matter how one understands body here, there's a moment when it seizes and takes possession of individuated bodies. 
Can the body of truth, for example, rely on the organic substructure when there is no consensus on the biological model of body con corresponding to what the concept potentializes? Feminist theories of the body, for example, be it Judith Butler's performativity, would be particularly vulnerable to rapid assimilation where the strong singularity of the event, not seized by a sexed body whose truth, for example, is the manifestation of an inexistent appearing as woman in the post-Beauvoirian wave of feminist thought. But I have to move on towards, uh, towards the, the end of my presentation, given uh, the few minutes uh, that, are, that are left. Uh, and, and emphasize that uh, what this notion of body is, is something that Badiou uh, will draw and maintain uh, in relation to Lacan's commitment to the non-composed multiple when he cites him as saying, the presupposition that there is somewhere a place of unity is well, suspended, is well suited to suspend our ascent. In other words, the notion of body here recast through the logic of categorical theory, maintains the generic composition of body. Uh, it provides us nonetheless with a series of parameters outside of which there is no real space to think this generic body. And I just want to list what these parameters are because one of the purposes of Logique des Mondes is to provide a theory of worlds but worlds, but situate and locate the type of world in which generic emergence may occur in, form, in the form of a body of truth and eventually when brought back to the context of the ontology to a form of generic subject. So the types of worlds uh, without which uh, aspects a body cannot emerge are worlds without points, worlds without events, worlds with incorporation but without bodies, worlds without efficacious parts, and worlds without organs. Now, in none of these worlds can one expect to find the incorporation of a body of truth, since one of the sub-objects of the category is missing, either points, events, bodies, parts, or organs. However, there is one condition stemming from Proposition 8 that I had put up before that warrants incorporation or generation. And I quote Logique des Mondes. It can be inferred from the statement, X is an element of the body and X differs from the trace epsilon, that the degree of existence of X is strictly lesser than the maximum M, meaning that some singular object, a body, can imminently carry the elemental effects of an event such that it itself is not the event. The separation as much from the subject, between subject and event, and body and event, is a fundamental aspect to Badiou's theory. So in conclusion, where this body may lead is a motif upon which Badiou does not overly speculate, just like with the generic subject. It's not, a it's not a task of telling the future time of the generic subject. Albeit, if it is that of the truth, Logique des Mondes suggests that it joins up with the eternal. In the end, the path, as far as we see it, leads again to the Cartesian sciences. Indeed, to inscribe the recursive structure of subject innately into a generic body. The path to achieve this is by narrowly focusing mathematics on the process of generation instead of totalizing philosophy and mathematics as discourses. This has been the force of bad use system until now whose models of generality have extended the power of universal truth to a thought that exceeds the symbolic and the signified. And this is what I meant by creative incompleteness and its script requires both set theory as well as category theory to be mapped. On this note, I thank you for allowing me this time of reflection. I thank the organizers who weren't here, particularly Yana, and I thank Alain Badiou for his years of teaching and research. Thank you very much. Uh, we will have some time for questions later, but now let us proceed with the second speaker.